let's take a look at how to use nav mesh surface when we have an object which is not pointing upward, right? So importantly, when we created this nav mesh, what it did was calculated where the nav mesh would be based on the local up vector of this game object, right? So environment one, this is the upward direction, right? Which is the same, in this case, the same as world space. Uh, and so it said, okay, I'm going to place nav mesh on top of these walls. I'm going to place it on the floor plane here because this is clearly uh, the direction that we want to have our agent oriented upward in. Now, if we select our environment, duplicate it uh, using control or command D, and I'm going to take this copy and I'm going to rotate it. Uh, let's make it negative 90 degrees on the Z axis. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees on the Z axis. And I'm going to move it, I believe it's negative 104 units. Yeah, that's going to line it up with the edge. And then we're going to move it up to zero. Okay, so now we have a second instance of our environment. Note, it has the nav mesh surface, but when we copied and rotated it, uh, it did not preserve that data. So we need to regenerate it by hitting bake. And now what we can see is because the local up vector is pointing, in this case, this way, it's now generated it again with the walkable area on the tops. Uh, and on the floor. So now we have a nav mesh where once our agent crosses over to it, it will begin walking on the walls. And it's really that simple, right? You just need to basically use a holder object that you're going to use to define the orientation of the surface and then attach the component uh, and bake the mesh. So with that in place, what we're going to do now, now we have two nav meshes in our scene, right? So what we need to do to allow our agent to move between them is we need to add a additional component called a nav mesh link. And I'm going to add that to environment one. So I'm going to grab the nav mesh link script from the nav mesh components scripts folder, add it to environment one. And then I'm going to right click and fly down in here. We can see here are the gizmos. I'm going to just use the numerical start point and position it kind of over here. Let's try negative 98 there. And the end point is going to be maybe negative 100. Let's try that. Now, I'm flying in by right clicking and WASDing. The, these, uh, you can't frame select it on these gizmos, so you're going to need to get used to kind of flying around to get close to them. And so now what we need to do is to position each of these start and end points so that they're touching uh, the respective two meshes, right? So I'm going to pull this down. And let's see if that, is that right? Well, that's gone through the floor. All right. So one way I find this easier to visualize, let's just pull this down and kind of pull this up and just eyeball it a little bit there. One way I find this easier to visualize is to raise the width, right? So we have the start and end point, which is what I'm setting by moving these gizmos, but we also have the width. So I'm going to make this width really wide. It's going to be 200 and let's reset the Z or Z to zero and zero. And what we want to do now is we, oh, this Y is too low. Where is it? Okay. It's a little bit hard to see. Okay, now we can see the gizmos there a little bit. These kind of, there we go. Okay, so what you want to do, the width makes it easier to see because it creates this white representation. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a link that goes all the way along the edge of these two surfaces, right? So the, the useful thing about the gizmo is that it turns white when the link is valid. If I move this too far away or in either direction, we can see that it stops 
uh, displaying this kind of transparent white gizmo. And if I go too high, it should do it as well. So there's some forgiveness, right? There's some uh, slack that you have. It doesn't have to be immediately on the mesh, just pretty close to it. But you can see that if you go too far away, uh, you're going to break the connection. So in this case, now we know that we have a valid link from this nav mesh here, the floor, to uh, the nav mesh on the wall. And so I'm not going to go through every setting here, but the relevant ones are that we want to have this be bi-directional, right? Because we want to allow the agent to go both up and down, right? If you were using this to maybe jump down off a ledge and you didn't want the agent to jump back up, you would turn off uh, bi-directional. Importantly as well, our robot has in, in the uh, nav mesh agent component has the auto traverse off mesh link. Oh, it's a little hard to see there. Auto traverse off mesh links is true, right? And off mesh links were the kind of previous version of nav mesh links, uh, but so that needs to be updated actually, but the, uh, the principle is the same, right? So in this case, it's going to automatically move across any nav mesh links that it finds, but you could also have it wait and then do something via script. Um, which would be uh, which would be an option as well. So now we've got two nav mesh instances linked by a nav mesh link. So the next step is going to be to test this out, and we're going to need to write some tiny little scripts to get our robot moving along the nav mesh, and we will do that in the next segment. Uh, Cafro Software asks, "Do you have to bake a surface for each age for each agent? No, you have to bake a surface for each type of agent, and this is mainly based on their size, right? If something is going to be too tall or too wide to get through a doorway, that's the only case where you're going to need a different uh, agent. Well, maybe not the only case, but that's a common case where you would need a different agent type, right? Where you want to say this guy can get through this crack, but this one is too big to get through the crack, and we'll stop there." The Ursus Rex asks, can you link planes that aren't only square? Yes, you can. Uh, the only issue is that we currently don't support things like uh, spherical nav meshes. So if you wanted to do uh, navigation on the surface of a sphere, you would want to do a whole bunch of planes, you know, like a 20-sided dice uh, aligned to the surface. Uh, that would be the way that I would do it.